Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the mean, the median, and the mode. We're going to discuss the measures of central and density. Let's start with the mean. Okay, I guess even before you encounter this video, a lot of you already has an idea what um, the mean is about, okay, what we and how we obtain the mean. And the mean is one of the three measures of central tendency. It is the most commonly used. But aside from the mean, we also have the median and the mode. Okay. But among the three, as I've mentioned, the mean is the most commonly used measure in determining a single number that represents the entire distribution. For example, in your report card, you usually look at your average grade in order for you to get an idea how your overall performance was in a certain semester, quarter, grading period, and, uh, and others. So the mean for the distribution is the sum of the scores divided by the number of scores, or divided by the number of observations, divided by the sample size. If we're dealing with um, human respondents. Okay, so in this case, Okay, we have here a distribution, this is our given, and then to compute for the mean, we follow the formula M, which stands for the mean, you may also use X bar when, you are, when we are referring to the sample mean, but when we are referring to the population mean, it's in, we can use the Greek letter mu. Okay, assuming that we're dealing with the sample here, so let's use M, we can also use X bar, the formula would be the summation of x divided by n. So in order for us to determine the mean for these numbers, we need to get the sum or the total, the summation of all numbers, divided by the number of given numbers. Okay. So to compute for the mean, let's first determine the numerator, the summation of x, the total of 4, 6, 9, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 28. If you add all of them, the summation, the total is going to be 121. Okay? And the denominator, the N, is the number of scores. Okay, the number of scores, the number of observations, or in some cases, the number of respondents or the sample size. So we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 scores. So 121 divided by 9, our mean is 13.44. Therefore, we can say that 13.44 is a number that represents the entire distribution. That is the average of these numbers, that is one number that can represent all of these numbers. So that's for the mean. One downside of computing for the mean is that if you're dealing with so many numbers, it takes a lot of time to compute. And aside from that, the mean is affected by outliers or by extreme values. For example, our mean is 13.44, but as we can see, 13 is very far from 4, 13 is far from 28. Yes, there are values that are close to 13, like 10, 12, 15, and 17, but 13 is not that close to the extreme values. So it's easily affected by extreme values. So alternatively, aside from the mean, statisticians also determine the median, which is a good alternative for the mean. If the scores in a distribution are listed in order from smallest to greatest or smallest to largest, the median is the midpoint of the list. Take note of the keyword, the median is the midpoint. It is the middlemost value and compared to the mean, it is somehow easier to determine the median. And aside from that, it is not that sensitive to outliers and to extreme scores, which makes it a good alternative to the mean if we have outliers or if we have a skewed distribution. So to determine the median, this is from the textbook of Fox and Levin. Okay, So there is a way to determine the position of the median using the formula N, 
plus 1 divided by 2. Whereas n is the number of scores. And if since we're dealing with the same given, we can say that the n is 9 plus 1 divided by 2. So 10 divided by 2. The position of the median is 5. It doesn't mean that 5 is the median. What this means is that the median is the fifth number. Okay? So in order to determine what is the fifth number, in, or, in order to determine what is the median, you should arrange the given from least to greatest. If the numbers are not arranged from least to greatest, then you are gonna get the you're gonna get an incorrect answer. Okay, so it's important to arrange the numbers from least to greatest. And we can count from left to right. Let's look for the fifth number. So we have here one, two, three, four, five. Our median is 12. If you look at it, there are four numbers below before 12. And there are also four numbers after 12, making it the middlemost value. So 12 is our median. Okay, so our mean earlier was, our mean earlier was 13.44. This time the median is 12. Okay, so that's another way to describe a distribution, to look for its middlemost value. However, in this example, we're dealing with a distribution that is odd numbered, so it's easy to, to determine where is the center. But what if we're dealing with an even numbered distribution. In an even number distribution, there are two middle values. So what should we do if there are two middle values? Basically, we get the average of the two middle values. So let's try with this given. Remember, you have to make sure that you arrange the given from least to greatest. So let's start with the smallest number. We have four followed by 8, followed by 10, followed by 14, followed by 18, and then 19. We have 23 and 24. Okay. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 given. No? We have 8 numbers here. So here's how we compute for the position of the median. 8 plus 1 divided by 2. So that's going to be 9 divided by 2. The position of the median is 4.5. So what does 4.5 mean? It, it doesn't mean that 4.5 is the median. But this means that the median is the average of the fourth and the fifth value. So we're going to look for the fourth and the fifth value in the distribution, okay? And so let's start with the smallest number, one, two, three, four. So this is the first and five. So these are the two middle values, 14 and 18. As you can see, there are exactly three numbers before the first middle value and exactly three numbers after the second middle value. And since there are two middle values, 14 and 18, to determine the median, we need to get their average. So let me use MDN for the median. 14 plus 18 divided by 2. Our median is 16. That is our median. That is the median of the distribution. And this is how you compute for the median of an even number distribution. Get the two middle values and then get the average of the two middle values. And then lastly, we also have the mode. The mode is the score or category that has the greatest frequency or it is the most common score. It is the most popular score. So here in our first example, we have here 12, 29, 35, 36. 45, 45, 45, 15, 53. Obviously, there's only one number that has been repeated more than once. That is 45. So this is our mode. Our mode is 45. 
In our second example, we have here 12, 29, 35, 36, 36, 45, 45, 45, 50, 53. Okay, as we can see, 36 appeared twice, but 45 appeared thrice. Therefore, we can say that 45 is more popular than 36. It's It appeared twice, no? I, I mean, it appeared thrice. So our mode is 45 still 45 even though 46 appeared twice the mode its advantage compared to the mean and the median is that this is the easiest one to determine you just have to look for the popular score but the downside is that the popular score is not necessarily in the middle okay and other than that there are times in which no score appears more than once in a distribution which, which is why there are times wherein there is no mode in a given data set. And there are also times that there, um, the data set is multimodal. There is more than one mode. Okay. Well, anyway, that's for my demonstration on how to compute for the mean, the median, and the mode. Hope this video is helpful. See you next time for more videos. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.